What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Charleston Tours. Ignore the dead cat on my chest. It is a windy one today. I'm Trey Besson of the Besson Group here in Charleston, South Carolina, today exploring Mount Pleasant and all the sights, sounds, and of course, real estate in the area. Let's get started. to hear the feedback you guys have from the video today. If you haven't subscribed already, I would strongly encourage you to. We're giving you guys a unique look into all of the areas around Charleston that you won't find anywhere else on the internet. We're in Mount Pleasant today, a 52 square mile suburb just east of the Cooper River on the other side of the river from the downtown Charleston Peninsula with a population just over 92,000 according to the most recent census. Now, if you've tuned in to any of my previous videos, you know I can't start a video about Charleston without taking a brief look into the history first. And Mount Pleasant has a lot of it. The first permanent settlement in the area was established around the 1680s by English settlers who founded the town of Charlestown Landing on the Ashley River. That part of town is called West Ashley. We actually did a video on there that should be popping up on your screen here if you wanna take a look at that. Actually, West Ashley was abandoned due to the lack of fresh water, where from there, the settlers moved across the river to what is now Charleston. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Mount Pleasant was primarily used for agriculture and timber production until the mid 19th century, where Mount Pleasant came to be known as a summer resort for wealthy Charlestonians. The town's location on the water and its cooler temperatures made it a popular location to escape the heat. Mount Pleasant has always been close to downtown Charleston and is one of the many reasons that it's become such a hot spot to move to, along with its reputable schools. But it wasn't always convenient to go to and fro. They had two notably rickety bridges, both built in the early and mid 1900s. I grew up going over these bridges and you could literally feel them swaying when you were driving on the narrow lanes. The city finally claimed them unsafe in the mid 2000s. They actually blew up the bridges with dynamite to make room for what is now one of the iconic structures in Charleston deemed the Arthur Ravenel Bridge, or the Cooper River Bridge as the locals call it. After the completion of the new bridge in 2006, which made the area so much more accessible, began this crazy boom across Mount Pleasant that's nearly doubled in size over the last 20 years. There's now a few ways to get on and off Mount Pleasant, obviously across the Cooper River to get downtown, as we just said, but you can come down I-526 from the greater Charleston area, and the airport is that direction, about 15 miles away as well. Another way you can come here is from the north down Highway 17 along the coast from Allwindall and the McClellanville area. And that's also the direction you'd take coming to and from Myrtle Beach. Then there's Highway 41, which crosses through the Wando area and up into the more rural areas surrounding Charleston. There's some cool historical landmarks that have stood the test of time here. You have Fort Sumter there behind me. We're also home to the Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum that features several battleships, including the USS Yorktown and the USS Laffey. Boone Hall Plantation, which has been here since the 1700s, has a beautiful mile long avenue of oaks planted shortly after being built hundreds of years ago that are still holding strong today. It's a popular spot for a wedding venue with some notable faces that were married there. And it has a couple of scenes in the notebook that were filmed there too. Run, Forrest, run! Run, Forrest! And the last things I'll mention about there are the happenings because they do have some fun festivities that my family and I enjoy going to annually. They have the Low Country Oyster Festival in January, the Strawberry Festival in April, the Wine and Food Festival in May. In September and October, during the day, they have the Pumpkin Patch and Corn Maze. And in the evenings, they have Boone Hall Fright Nights, which has a haunted hayride, haunted house, and some spooky attractions that happen around the Halloween time. 
And then lastly in December is Boone Hall Christmas. They turn the place into a winter wonderland with a nice Christmas light display, a holiday market, and activities for the family. So keeping on going with the history of this place, Old Village, where we are right now, is one of the hottest neighborhoods in all of Mount Pleasant. It was established in the 18th century and is one of the oldest neighborhoods in the Charleston area with homes still standing today. Known for its tree-lined streets, historic homes, and quaint shops and restaurants, it's located on a peninsula between Shim Creek and the Charleston Harbor with some incredible water views and sights and sounds throughout the neighborhood, including one of my favorite spots to catch the sunrise or a sunset in Charleston at the Pitt Street Bridge. And the Pitt Street Bridge has some history to it as well. It was originally built in the late 1800s as a passage from here to Sullivan's Island, but has since been converted into a popular pedestrian and walking path. Here in Old Village, there's also Alhambra Hall, yet another notable wedding venue in the area that also features a playground, picnic areas, and quite the view of the harbor. So before we get too much more into the residential side of things, as we're about to leave this neighborhood right now, let's talk about more of the happenings and where they are in Mount Pleasant. So Mount Pleasant has three primary roads stretching across two zip codes. There's Coleman Boulevard to the south side, Highway 17 a bit north of there, then Long Point a little further up, and Highway 41 past the IOP connector that we spoke about that goes to the north area. We'll start here on Coleman, coming from the direction of the base of the bridge from downtown Charleston, where if you go all the way down Coleman, you'll reach one of the two popular beaches most proximal to Mount Pleasant in Sullivan's Island, with an area we'll certainly do a video on at some point, it's got a really nice beach scene there with a strip of restaurants and shops that are noteworthy to the area. More to come on that at some point, but you'll definitely want to stop by Sullivan's if you're in the neighborhood. Backtracking a bit, before you get to Sullivan's on Coleman, you'll pass a lot of fun happenings in Mount Pleasant. You've got Shim Creek that offers one of the most phenomenal views in the city, no matter the time of day, and it's lined with restaurants to catch a bite or have a couple cocktails. The part I love most about Shim is it's got dock access to both sides, so if you find yourself on a boat, you can pull up right up to the restaurant and dock up to whatever bar or restaurant you want to go to. Then they have kayak tours, paddleboard tours, fishing charters, and a couple of party boats that operate right here off of Shim Creek. Also down Coleman is Old Village that we spoke of already. It's actually a nice neighborhood to walk or bike through with some mom and pop shopping options. And lastly along Coleman, before you get to the beach, are more places to dine in food-wise, and of course, residences and different businesses. All right, so now let's trickle on over to Highway 17. And between here and there is yet another noteworthy landmark, the Memorial waterfront park here in Mount Pleasant. It's a popular spot for locals and tourists alike for the views, to exercise, and they have a good many festivities hosted out here throughout the year with live music, shows, and things of that nature. So on Highway 17, or Johnny Dodds as it's called, are most of the area's businesses, restaurants, other forms of commercial real estate, and neighborhood entrances lined up all down the highway. This street is where you'll find a majority of your shopping options in Town Square, along with your bigger box stores. Continuing further past Town Square, you'll reach the IOP connector, which if you take that, it goes to the other close beach to Mount Pleasant that is yet another one worth a visit called Isle of Palms. I grew up summering there at our family beach house. It's a gorgeous beach with some great spots to eat and drink on the island. They also have a private golf and tennis resort out there called Wild Dunes that has private beach access, a couple golf courses, clay tennis courts, a marina, and is a popular spot for weekend getaways, a desirable wedding venue, and a residential real estate hotspot in the area. We've got the most up-to-date listings on all of Isle of Palms at the website at the bottom of your screen. All right, so back to Highway 17. If you continue to go northeast a bit further, you'll pass more and more businesses and neighborhoods. You'll eventually reach Highway 41, which continuing straight down 17 from there, or if you take a left on 41, in that corridor is where a lot of the growth has been happening and is continuing to grow residentially and commercially daily. Those are the neighborhoods of Park West, Carolina Park, Dunes West, 
and Rivertown are that direction, among others. We'll go over some of the newer and resale neighborhoods a little later in the video. So now that you have more of your bearings about the area, let's talk about more things to do around here. So of course you have your boating, the sailing, the marinas, the water festivities, and everything that goes along with being close to the water. But there's also nice options for recreation with multiple parks, the areas becoming more biker friendly than it was, comparably anyway. It's not there yet, but the city has taken strategic moves to make the road safer for bikers. A long way to go on that though. There's also tennis courts all around with both public and private access. Pickleball is growing like crazy. There's a new business that just opened with a pretty cool concept here called the Crush Yard that opened recently. It's a 40,000 square foot space open daily that features eight indoor pickleball courts, a restaurant with pub food, a bar, and an outdoor lounge. Recreationally, there's also quite a few golf courses, both public and private. And to name them from proximity to Charleston, you have Patriots Point, Snee Farm, there's the Lynx and Harbor course out in Wild Dunes on IOP. There's Rivertown and Dunes West down Highway 41. A little further down 17 is Charleston National. And there's a private course called Bulls Bay in Allwindaw down 17, just outside of Mount Pleasant. We're certainly not lacking on things to do here and places to go, but I will say it's not all rainbows and butterflies. You know, the traffic's picking up by the day because we're not a hidden gem here anymore. The bugs are more prevalent here than they are in many inland places because you're close to the water and humidity. There's about four months of the year here, primarily during the summer, where it gets pretty hot. Now, I counter that one by doing most of my tasks in the morning and then making the hot afternoon a beach day, a pool day, dining at one of the hundreds of renowned restaurants we have in the area, or finding anywhere with air conditioning. We do feasibly have 12 months of the year where you can go outside here, which I've come to know as one of our biggest pros, as I've never had to shovel snow to leave my house or my driveway. Now, don't get me wrong, it does snow here. The last time it actually snowed and stuck was in January of 2018, and it lasted a couple of days. Anyways, let's now take a look at the residential side of things here in Mount Pleasant. It has pretty much everything here, from townhomes and condos to pocket communities. Then you have master plan communities, historic homes, cottage homes, and gigantic estates. The median price here is about 700,000 as of this video, with townhomes and condos starting around the 400s and go up into the multi-millions when you're talking your more luxury style homes with a lot of variable pricing in between. In Mount P, there are some great neighborhoods, like the one we're in right now, Ion, which is all resale, but it was actually one of Charleston's first master plan communities where you had shopping and dining right here in the neighborhood with luxury estates throughout, and they have a racket club in here with pickleball and tennis courts. Some of the other noticeable resale communities are Cooper Estates, Beresford Creek, the Groves, Hobcaw Point, and among many others. Mount Pleasant's been here for a while, so obviously there's going to be neighborhoods throughout, a lot of which we won't be covering in this video today, but to see all the available listings in Mount P, you can certainly go to the website at the bottom of your screen. Now, let's take a look at your new construction options you have in Mount Pleasant. You have Phillips Creek, which is being built by Dan Ryan Builders, Liberty Hill Farm being built by Kahov. There's Riverside and Carolina Park. Then you have the Harbor at Dunes West, which is going up right now. There's Park Island in Park West. And there's almost always some specs being built by custom builders around the area, even in some of the more established neighborhoods. Right now they have some on the market and coming up in the neighborhoods of Old Mount Pleasant and Old Village. The last neighborhood I'll mention is Point Hope. It actually has a Charleston address and not a Mount Pleasant one, as it's a little closer to the Wando Kane Hoy region, a little further down Highway 41. But they're being built by John Whelan Homes and David Weekly, some reputable builders in the area. We have a video of what all is going on there on our channel. It'll pop up on your screen here. 
there again for all the current listings in Mount P. Go to mountp.buyingchs.com. That's mtp.buyingchs.com. And if you want any information about any of these neighborhoods, give me a call or an email. The information should be on your screen. And guys, I've actually had the conversation a lot recently, thinking it would be one of my admins or someone on my team that's answering the phone. This is my personal information and ultimately how to get in touch with me. I'm available for you guys whenever you need me. Don't hesitate to get in touch. Speaking of. This is Trey. Hold on guys, I'll be right back. So that's it for our video today. To have access to all of our future content and to support the channel, you can like, subscribe, and tap the bell to be notified when those future videos do become available. And make sure to leave a comment. Actually, the reason that this video is happening today was from a comment from one of our subscribers. So we do listen, and we're excited to bring you guys more content. Until next time.